Hello. Hello, hello. Did you you found it? Okay. I cool. found it. I'm here. Awesome. 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 Sorry, I'm, I'm late. How's everybody? Good. Hi, Tyler. Oh, Whoa, it's Tyler. Parthen. Tyler's wearing an eye shirt. Um, yeah. So different eye. I work for the other U of I <laughs> <laughs> until July. Cool. What do you do at the other U of I? I work for the Illinois Athletic Department as a financial oh. analyst. As a financial guy? Uh, yeah. So I'm one of the, the financial analysts at the Illinois Athletic Department. Cool. No, don't 
Don't be from please. Hi. Hi everyone. Okay. Hi B. Um Mark, hello. Stacy, hello. Jake, hello. Hello, everyone. Okay, so I have this weird thing going on where my cell phone is six minutes off of my computer phone. Oh, six just, minutes. Just huh? today I noticed that. I was taking a nap and it said my my meeting was ready. And I said, no, no, I have some five more minutes. But yeah. Hello, Aaron. Hello. This is all this very awkward time where people are joining on. Hello, everyone. Hello, Carol. Hello. And then where our pictures get smaller and smaller as more people come on. Yes. I was on a call Hi, yesterday with 125 people. Joining. Somebody, I just interrupted someone there. Yeah, who's, who's chatting? Let's see who's here. I'm going to take attendance. I think everybody has, everybody's mute on, everybody's, there's not, no one has a mute button on except now Aaron, Tyler, Stacey, James, they're all coming in. Okay. Yeah. Cool. What were you saying now, Carol? I was saying I was on a call yesterday with 125 people. Oh, yeah. Crazy. It was um, actually... It went, it went extremely well, um, and the conversation was about what's going on in the world today and how we need to support each other. So it was very somber. People were more than teary-eyed, but crying. I mean, they were all admissions directors saying, we need to, we need to work hard to get people of color and African Americans to come to law school um, so that they can represent themselves so we can have a more just society. It was very moving. And yeah, I just, I just want to say that we, um, we're living in a very, very important moment. It'll probably be longer than a moment, um, but we need to, I think, be ready for a change. That's my somber, be ready for, yeah, let's, let's help out our brothers and sisters who have not enjoyed what we have been able to enjoy, most of us anyway. If anybody wants to say anything, I'm happy to open that up. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for those words, Carol. Um, I am um, Stacy Donahue, and I grew up in Richmond, Virginia. And I think there's another person starting school this year, Kenneth, um, also from Richmond. Um, but it was really, really exciting to hear yesterday and today that the governor is taking down the Confederate statues on Monument Avenue. I grew up on Monument Avenue. Um, I lived, I mean, I could, even as a small child, I could have thrown a rock from my front um, for my house uh, and land and, and like and like the statue it was that close and so it's really really powerful that those are coming down so it's just been a, a super exciting you know day day and a half or so on that front um, so that's been really um, that's been really cool to watch that's very Stacey, exciting Stacy I'm gonna tell you this I will believe it when I see it come down um, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think that just because he says that it will, that's Richmond. And nothing happens quickly in Richmond. I don't, that's I, true. I just, I think his heart is there, but I just don't see it happening. It could, maybe now with everything that's happening, maybe. But I just know how people in Richmond are. And, um, I just, I just don't know. Um, I just, you and I, maybe we can talk about that. If you're not from that area, it's hard for you to understand how entrenched people are with 
the whole Confederacy and Civil War and that whole attitude of that area. But I will just tell you, um, there will be people that will chain themselves to that statue to prevent it from being moved. Um, so I'd be stunned that it will happen easily. And I just, I'm just telling you people there are, I'll, I'll pay money to see it happen. It'll be a very interesting. Well, we can be hopeful. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't think the, I don't think the caution is misplaced. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very hopeful. Anybody else? I just uh, I want to tell you guys when you were talking, I was making faces not because of your statements, but because my daughter is right next to me misbehaving. So I apologize. That's uh, okay. We understand. We appreciate um, that you muted. Uh, I also want to say, you know, I didn't come from Richmond or from the United States of America. I came from a country that does not have personal liberties. Um, and they're not preserved by the government and in this time it's very difficult to watch that the government is trying to um, invade the, the first amendment right to assemble and i urge everyone to not forget that we do have our constitutional rights and to exercise them obviously in a respectful manner but um if we apply the First Amendment and Second Amendment to only one group of people, we're also violating the 14th Amendment. And it's very important that we are all given an equal opportunity, right, to exercise our First Amendment rights. Because what I've seen on the computer, you know, on, on the television lately um, has really upset me because it reminds me of where I came from. And that's not what I want this country to become. Thank you. Yes, and we should remember to vote. I mean, that's one way of um, exercising our rights. Anybody else? Hi, Cindy. Hi, Carl. We were just talking about what's going on in the world. I know, it's a lot, <laughs> presently, yeah. And we're hoping that there'll be some changes. I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm hopeful too. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we should just start talking. Um, I wish that I had a lot more information than I did last week um, about how things are going to be. Um, and there's apparently a big meeting, big meeting tomorrow, another meeting on Monday. Um, the president keeps, the president of the university is, well, right now he's kind of consumed with, um, with the, uh, the protests that are happening and how he's supporting change that needs to happen. Our President Green is really um, being um, proactive and, um, and listening. So that is good to hear. Um, Diana, are students yes. getting the emails from President Green? Uh, it'd be good to ask them. Are you all getting it through your Vandal email? You're not? <laughs> okay. So I don't know how that works with those who haven't well, articulated yet. Yeah, we can easily we can easily forward them to you. I know that he just sent they one may out. Not be on a, they may not be on a listserv yet. Oh, that's probably right. Okay, so um, Diana and Renee, can you make a note that we should be circulating those important emails from the president and, and the dean? Are you getting the ones? Oh, yeah, they wouldn't want to be added yet. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Normally, we don't have this communication, this much communication with our um, deposited students yet. We just kind of say, oh, everybody, let's get ready for um, orientation. And then, but yeah. 
orientation is uh, going to look different than it has in the past. So just before this meeting, um, Renee and I met with the new ambassadors. So every year we get to, our, we offer that people can apply to be ambassadors of the school um, so that they can meet with um, deposited students, prospective students, and kind of represent the school. And so some of them are brand new now. And I asked them, hey, would you guys be willing to talk to students who are um, deposited and coming? And yes, they said, yes, we'd like to. We could do Zoom meetings with them. So um, I'm going to put out uh, the opportunity for people to sign up for that. But if any of you would like to just you know, respond in chat and let Diana know, yeah, that would interest me. Um, we have students who have come from other areas. Um, a student from Montana, uh, another student who drives to Moscow every day, 40 minutes. She's from Lapway. Um, she works at the Nesbrus tribe. Uh, and then we have uh, students who are in Lewiston, Idaho, and some who live in Boise, uh, but come to school in Moscow or the other way around. Um, Diana has ambassadors in Boise as well. So yeah, if there's somebody in particular you'd like to talk to, we're happy to connect you with them. Um, so yeah, Boise too. Yeah, in Boise too. So um, I'm just now thinking the president's emails, the dean's emails, just to keep them in the loop about what's going on as things are ever changing every day. Uh, this this year in admissions, um, I'm feeling now, and LSAC, the Law School Admissions Council, is just saying this is going to be a year like no other year. You know, with so much uncertainty with the, the virus and with the United States in the moment of flux that we're in right now, um, that people may just be telling us, hey, you know, I'm not sure I want to go to law school now or I'm going to go someplace closer to school or closer to home. So I just, I'm, I want to put the word out to you. If you're having some of those thoughts, it would be great if we could talk about those things so that we can either um, quell some of the anxieties that you have or to um, connect you with you know uh, resources um, or just to talk it through and so diana renee ambassadors faculty members we are happy to connect with you to allay your fears or anxieties about starting this year because we know it's happening everywhere um, so yes Put that word out there you know a lot of times students deposit at more than one school and so kind of just waiting till the last minute to decide and that you know that that is your prerogative if you want to do that um but it would be great if we could have the opportunity to kind of say hey well let's talk about the differences between the two schools that you're thinking about if it's something other than being close to home like there's not much we can do about you deciding i'd rather be closer to family or i'd rather be um you know in this part of the country where i'm comfortable but if it's things that we can talk through or you know help out um we're we're happy to do that yeah, we have a question in the comments um are the colleges that are going online like harvard making it harder to be in person this fall for other law schools who choose to i'm assuming that's what you meant you wanted to expand on that is that what you meant kenneth after the colleges that are going online, making it harder to be in person this fall. Um, yeah, that's what I meant. It's just, I know that there's so many things that go into consideration. First of all, you got to worry about what the state tells you to do. I know that's the first consideration you have, but I also know that when you have colleges like everybody in California, um, and then you have Harvard, that's going to do their first semester. All of a sudden, you have, yeah, you have all of them doing that, then do you have to, I, I guess you have to take that in consideration. Um, does that make it harder on you to go one way or the other? Or is it like, eh, we're going to do what we're going to do? Um, I think that the, our governor has, um, you know, in place every two weeks, kind of loosening up, loosening up, supposedly until numbers, you know, warrant us to pull back. We are in phase, what phase are we in now? Three? Three. Um, and so apparently the numbers haven't shot up enough to cause a pullback um, in Idaho. So I, Diana, do you know how many cases there are in Boise? I think last time, I think it was in the 700s um, in terms of like 
testing. Yes. You know, those who have been tested. Uh, I don't know about this week. I think they, I'm not sure when they report if it's every day, but. Um, you no, know, they used to report every day in our newspaper here and they've kind of stopped doing that now. Yeah. In Lataw County, which includes Moscow and the surrounding areas, we have six cases as far as I know. Um, so that's kind of encouraging for us. Although right. you, see, you see more people on the streets. Um, a lot of them are wearing masks, some are not. Uh, so it's just, right now we're in kind of an okay place. I'm a little anxious about when students just <laughs> come to town. Um, so I'm encouraging people to take precautions for yourself and for others. Maybe come a little early so that you can um, quarantine and then you know, know kind of where to go, where the grocery stores are and school. You have your own carol at schools. Um, we are likely going to provide space between, uh, Carol is a study desk, that's a big desk that has a shelf and a walking area. We're probably going to keep um, the, we're going to have six feet in between where students are studying, where they're spending most of your time if you choose to be at school. Uh, so there'll be all kinds of directives, you know, one-way hallways and um, kind of uh, processes to get into the classroom if you are part of the group that is going into the class. Uh, so we're just, um, I imagine that we'll have everything in place in our heads and on the signs and then we'll get school and think, oh, we didn't think of this. So um, we're just, yeah, we like to have you guys asking us questions so that we know we didn't take that into consideration. This is, we're new to this and so is everybody. So we appreciate it. Uh, so we, Somebody did, a faculty member sent out uh, the article about Harvard going online completely this semester. Um, but, and, and I'm sure that the deans and the president are looking into that as well. We're gonna be making our own decisions though. Um, it's not that we don't care what other people are doing, but we know our, you know, we know Boise and we know Moscow and we know kind of how things are here. So, that's what I have to say about that. Anybody else want to add something? I think normally Harvard tends to lead the pack with that, you know, with like GRE. And I know schools look at what Harvard does, but because it's all specific to each state, like East Coast obviously is hit hard with the cases. So they have to make that. And Harvard happens is in the East, you know, right in, uh, in, in Cambridge. I think this time schools have to be very specific to their state's needs and the students' needs. Because Harvard usually does lead and people follow. Some schools choose to do the GRE like they did. But I think this is one situation where it is literally case by case and school by school. So I don't know, I'm curious, because it went out yesterday, that you, like the article, I don't know when it went out, but I know we got it yesterday. There's plenty of discussion, I bet, in admissions offices right now about what Harvard said, um, honestly, so. I agree with Carol where Harvard is in, in Massachusetts, we're in Idaho and they have different stay home orders. I don't know if the one those are lifted, if it even is lifted, I don't know, but I'm curious too. Yeah, what are things like where you're living? That's like true, Cindy, yeah. are, are people out and about? Well, um, you know, I really actually go out um, myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, I've been reading the, I mean, reading what, what's happening, watching the news also. It's not, I mean, you know, um, Georgia lifted their, um, you know, had these restrictions being lifted every day. We're one of the first states. And, um, you know, it's not really, nothing has gone significantly up. But with the protests and everything this um, in the past couple of days, I'm not sure how that is going to change, like what they are going to be reporting right now. Mm -hmm. But for us, I know it's not like, I know that you know, Georgia was in the news a couple of weeks ago because um, you know, it was one of the first days to start lifting the sanctions. Um, you know, companies go back, you know, business, and everybody thought it was, you know, we're going to get you know, despite um, an increase in, in cases, but that wasn't the case. So, um, you know, I guess I don't really go out myself. So um, I, I'm, I'm good either way, you know, if it's online or I just, I think for me right now, what I'm looking for is some, something to plan ahead with. So, you know, um, I know you had mentioned that it's likely we'll be having um, in-class um, 
learning and now you know it's like is that set in stone or are we no i would say it's not set in stone and it's there's likely to be one you know one third of the class is in person and then two thirds online and that will rotate but oh, there are some people who are high risk themselves or who live with someone who's high risk and you, and they can't take the risk of getting infected to go home and infect their family. So we are taking those. If you, if you are one of those people, you can certainly email us and let us know that, Hey, I have this issue that I cannot be in class. And we're, we're working with you with students on that. So, so yes, nothing is set in stone. Things are changing. If the numbers were to spike up, a lot would change. So, um, yeah, we're just taking it one step at a time. Another question is, have the incoming students been polled about their preferences for remote learning this fall? We haven't sent out a poll, no. No, we haven't. Um, and that is, I think they're still trying to figure out how many students per class and how many, you know, but I think that it's gonna to come to that. There are some students who are putting forth their, their preferences about, I, I can't be, um, I can't be in the class and exposed to the virus. And so then those people will be taken out of the loop when it comes time to have people be in class in person. So yeah, as soon as we know more, I think that the Dean keeps saying, I mean, he's meeting with um, all the administrators um, at the university as a whole, not just at the law school, and they continue to make decisions and then say, oh, that's not going to work. And then, yeah, it's, it's going to be a hectic summer and just um, doing this and saying, oh, no, now this is going to work. And no, now this is going to work. It's going to require a lot of flexibility on our parts, I think. Any other questions? I noticed that Sandy sent out a registration email today. So did everybody get that email that they were expecting? Uh, make sure yes. you're checking your junk email. Because I know that she did send out a bunch of registration notifications today. Okay. Okay, Anne. Yes. Is it possible oh, to be in class all the time and not rotate out? That is an interesting question. Um, I think that you could make that offer if you wanted to. Because, I mean, there may be some people, you know, I think if, there's, if there are empty seats when everybody who can't be in class is taken into consideration and the ones who are rotating out are rotating out to not be in person, I think that's, you could say, put me on that list. Brave woman be called on by those professors. <laughs> you know, hey, smaller hey, classes. Hey, Jake. Hey, Jake. Sorry. Uh, away from the, the class topic a little bit, I guess. Uh, I was looking at the uh, class schedule for uh, Boise and was seeing some in red about like 1L designated makeup time. Is that like uh, if you miss a class, is there going to be some designated makeup time is that kind of what I'm looking at or well it's mostly if a professor misses a class or has to be out of town or that historically that's what that has been for and so they tell they ask all the clubs and other professors you know not to take up that time for other reasons than just the makeup class so there's always that one hour a week available okay cool yeah or we have some you know, snowstorms too that's another they save that too <laughs> when we close for whatever reason so yeah we don't really have snow days very often yeah and the same in Boise um do some professors not allow laptops in class yes which I know which professors um Diana you want to write that down I'll pull them and ask them okay so this is going to be a follow-up question okay yeah Got it. And we have some from that was emailed like, uh, where can you find the student health insurance policy or the, uh, the health insurance? 
So I'm going to post it in the, in the comments here and I'll email it. Great. There was a question about that. So that's just called SHIP for those who want to know. Um, when will the complete book list be available? I know they had the deadline last week, professors. Yes. Correct. And the, uh, the dean of faculty two weeks ago sent out an email saying, hey, everybody. Well, I said, could you please send out an email? And so he sent out an email. <laughs> So he kind of scolded them a little bit. And then two days ago, I said, uh, hey, I know you sent that email out, but how about your books? Can you post your books? And he went, oh my gosh. <laughs> so he um, apparently was getting on that today. So the book list should be uh, updated hopefully tomorrow. And he prompted the other professors who didn't have theirs, but most of them were there. There were two torts classes and two contract classes. Uh, that we're not there, but they should be there. Okay. Um, when, will we, when will the students have their sections for legal writing and research assigned to them? Yes. So thank you everybody for responding to those. Um, Renee and Diana have those all grouped together. There are some people who didn't respond and I guess they will just get the leftovers. I mean, sorry, <laughs> the other sections. <Yep. laughs> um, so I'm trying to think of when would be a good time for me to work on that. I think I can do that next week. So I'll try to get on that. That's why I asked you early, so I could get it done earlier. So Renee, can you put that down on my calendar, please? <laughs> uh, well, uh, <laughs> she will, I get it. Um, okay, yes, do I know. Pardon me? You're good. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Okay, do all professors have a midterm and final or do they just offer a final? Oh. Not all professors have midterms um, and we can find, you know what, this year is going to be very different uh, because there are some universities and we are considering not coming back after Thanksgiving. So it might be that they decide not to do a midterm and the exams will be a little bit early. So um, as soon as we get uh, a sense of that, Diana, can you write that down as um, something that we should ask the deans? Um, if they're, if that, if not coming back after Thanksgiving will impact whether a professor gives a midterm or not. Okay. Great. All right. Um, okay. The updated schedule in the email, is that reflecting the new <coughs> required class time? Uh, nope. They're, they're still talking about um, whether they're going to split that 75 minute class or not. So no, no decisions have been made about that. So I would recommend that if anybody knows that, hey, um, like Ann knows she'd like to be in person all the time. Um, if other people know I, I'm not gonna be able to be in person at all, you can start taking steps to let us know now. Um, because I think that there's going to be certainly some component of, of online and in person. Um, that, that's my sense right now. So if you um, think ahead, you know, like if you're thinking, oh, I might be one of those people. And then you can change your mind later. But if you, you might have to um, work with our, um, our office for accommodations is called CDAR. And so they may, the Dean of Students might direct you to CDAR. And so it might require some paperwork. So I'm just saying you might want to get that in earlier rather than later. Yes, and I'm going to post about their, their information in the comments right now. And I'll put it in a follow-up, CDAR. Yeah, because when this Zoom is over, the comments go away, right? No, they can see it. And when it's recorded, it's on the comment. It's just, okay. yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see what else from last week um, that maybe some, some questions were specific to people and then uh, some were for a general. Um, I have no follow up about simplicity. I believe that was, I asked David, and this in the fall, do you have access to simplicity? That was a question oh. from last week. With simplicity for um, those who are not here last week, it is database for the students to have access to for career for applying to jobs, um, um, summer internships. And so that was asked last week. 
And um, when will you, when can you accept student loans on Vandal Web? I think you can start accepting them now, correct? I think so. If you've been notified that, yeah, you're, that you, FAFSA's in and you've gotten your awards, you can, and, and I think Renee sent, did you send out an email today, Renee, that talked about um, scholarships and how to, um, just to make sure that, you know, there are no scholarships available in the summer if you award, if you take all your scholarships in the fall and the spring. So I did, yes, I was included in the check-in email today um, so that people understand that their scholarship is split in half between the two semesters. Yes, I did. Great, thanks. Let me see. So this was asked um, about in-person visits and tours. Um, those are not going to happen until we let you know when the buildings are open. So you will get official notification, um, but there will not be any exceptions made at all, at least no, there's no at least. They're alive. Uh, hold on, I think someone's talking in that meeting. Um, so I received the request to take a tour and they're not going to happen until we get confirmation that the building will be, both buildings will be open to the public. So I know you're anxious to see the building, but the, right now the option is just a virtual tour. So both locations have that through the admitted students day virtual, the virtual day. So, um, I will reiterate this, there's no tours, no in-person tours at this time at both locations. Yeah, so we're expecting that, um, they're talking like we're gonna be able to be back in our offices in the building um, in, well, I think they're starting in the middle of June. So some people will be working in their offices, others will not. And, but I'm, I, it's that, it still isn't gonna be kind of a free for all for everybody to go in at that point. Right. So it's, it's starting bit by bit. Yeah, it's with staff, faculty, and then potentially students, but they don't even have access to the building. So um, yeah, the public won't have that mm -hmm. either. Uh, Aaron has a question, Aaron, go ahead. Yes, um, I received an email and it talked about the scholarships and this access left, is that a year round scholarship or is that only for fall, spring? Oh, I think it's, I think it's probably only fall, spring as well. Um, but you can, uh, so the person, we've had three people at U of I win scholarships through Access Lex, but the way you get to win is that you participate in their online workshops. And so they're there to teach people how to be financially responsible and to make good decisions with regard to finances, uh, with regard to law school. So, so you can keep doing their little workshops. It, the way they have it separated is there's pre-law students and then there are first year students, second year students and third year students. They want you to just keep um, learning as you go through school. So there are scholarships for, uh, they, they draw from a, a bucket if you have participated in their little workshops, your name goes in for one time every time you participate in that. And so a student of ours just got a $40,000 scholarship, um, Ollie Wimbish, and he's okay with us using his name. And so that'll be applied for the fall and the next year. So, um, cause that'll be his third year. Um, but so the scholarships are applied for the third, for the year. And I think you might have some say into when you would like that to be applied. Uh, but you, your name goes into the drawing every time you do a little workshop. So it's worth going in there and just doing that. Um, yeah, the year before we had two students who won, you know, one of $40,000, another $5,000. And I always thought that is kind of silly for me kind of advertising this whole thing. But if you can get some money, like, <laughs> you know, while you're learning, it's maybe not so silly. So access likes. Um, if you need that email, uh, yeah, Renee has it in her email, I think. Yeah. So do it. And I know we hate to think about money and how much debt we're going to be in, but it doesn't uh, make things any better if we are ignorant about it. So we should just know what we're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Yeah, so I'm thinking there's no reason to keep us here all for a long time. If we're done, we're done. Um, yes, oh, Anne. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't plug my ears. Um, I sent an email to Diana and asked, I wanted to know before I accept um, loans, grants, scholarships, things like that, how much is tuition each semester? It always says by the book, but if I don't need all the money, I don't want to accept all the money. So is there a ballpark figure you can give me? Uh, yes, I can give you more than ballpark. Um, so for the whole year, it's 22,270, and we're just dividing that by two. So 11,135 uh, for, yeah, resident tuition. Okay? You repeat that again, Carol, just one more sure. time. 22, wait a second, 22,760 is all year in state tuition. Divided by two. Okay. Eleven three eighty. With, so with regard to scholarships, you can take what you think you might need, and you can always go back and say, "Oh, now I need more." Okay, they're okay with doing that as long as you don't hit. I mean, the, you've got a ceiling. Right. Okay, so yes, thank I you. always caution: don't take more than you need because you will spend it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions? Um, you can always like ask them here, email, um, and we have follow-up ones too. So anybody Kenneth else? Has one. Yeah. Oh? Hi. Um, oh, I sent Diane. I sent you an email, mm -hmm. and I just wanted thoughts and everything about how um, with the class times being at fifty minutes and how all the credits and everything to the ABA are really regimented towards time, and with like Harvard going towards online. I was just like, what your thoughts on how that's just gonna affect us, not just us as like our class getting credits, just in general, how that's gonna affect uh, law schools moving forward, especially for this class and upcoming classes. Um, so Kenneth, we didn't ignore your email. I forwarded it on to my boss and she said, we're talking about this next week. So she said, I can't believe that people are being this proactive and asking these very <laughs> good questions. So. Good question. We have no idea right now, but we're looking into it. Okay. Yeah, I was. I figured it's just all a working process. And nobody really has answers, but I was just like, because this is crazy with how. Because I think it was when you first sent the handbook link. I was just looking through it and saw how oh, they have to have X amount of credits in class hours, and now all this online and reduced yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So the ABA has rules about how many classes you could take that are online classes or your body in a classroom, um, especially when we started the, our, the location in Boise, because we used to all be in Moscow and then we went to Boise and then we were offering some classes, distance classes. And then we have to be very careful as to how many credits we were offering distance classes and to tell students you can't take any more than this many classes. So it was, it's, a, it's a valid question, Kenneth. And it was mostly uh, really impressive that you're reading the handbook. <laughs> so you're going to get points for that. <laughs> who is that student who is reading the handbook? <laughs> I'll take so them. it's a good idea to do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And just and when you say, Carol, remember how you asked, I asked that question? You didn't answer me a question. We're working on it. We're working on it. Keep asking the question. Yeah. So I know when you all email me, I forward them off. And I don't want to reply back. <laughs> Next time I will sing, I sent it to Carol, just so y'all can feel comfortable that <laughs> I saw it. But yes, and your question, I was like, okay, I could divide it by two, but I sometimes I wonder if there's like, uh, you know, tuition and fees. Sometimes fees just hit you in the beginning. But yeah, uh, yes, you know. Carol and I definitely answered it. I, I apologize for not getting back to you uh, faster with that answer. Um, oh, <laughs> two candidates. Yes, you have to... Yeah, to, but I, I think in class you call out by your last name. So I think that helps out for Socratic method in class. But yes. Oh, yes. Are you both Kenneths? I didn't yeah, get Kenneth. That. <laughs> or Ken, I'd like to say the full name, Kenneth, until you tell me otherwise. 
I mean, for, yeah. for clarity, if sake, we are naming, we if we are calling you the wrong name, please let us know. Yes. And that's, you also need to, let's see, you know, sometimes people go kind of by a nickname and that's different than, that's my legal name and I never go by that name. Yes. So that is something we have to kind of correct. Yes. Yeah, so um, pull from your application. I think that's what, that's how we report it to, right? I think that's, we pull it from the application, how they. Yes. The name. Okay. So Cindy, do you go by Cindy or Cynthia? I mean, I've been known um, with um, Cindy for so long, but either way, I'm fine. Cindy. Okay, okay. perfect. And so, so either way, she's I fine. Don't, I, don't, I don't care which one. It just like if you and I are talking, or like if we're in a group of five or six people, and they say Kenneth, just like when uh, uh, Miss Wells was just talking a second ago, and she kept saying Kenneth, my head kept like okay, did I miss her saying something? And I was like, okay, we, we need to figure this out because uh, it's driving me crazy. Um, I don't care. Do you want to be Ken or Kenneth? Because I don't know, have you faced that all your life? Nobody here besides us care about that. But um, do you have a preference? Well, I mean, I, I'm entering my 30s now. And up until now, I've, been gone, I've gone by Kenny. And I figured that's, I should phase out of that a little bit, especially if I want to be a, you know, a So it's a new parent. name for you, Kenneth Krisky, right? Yes. Yeah. And you pronounced it correctly too. That's, that's crazy. Perfect. Like people, yeah. Can't get it. But um, yeah. Other Kenneth. How, what, how do you, your last name is it Epps? How do you pronounce Epps, it? Yeah. Epps. Are you going, are you going to be in um, Moscow or Boise? I'm going to be in uh, Moscow. Oh, okay. Great. Um, yeah. So Ken's fine. Where, where are you, different. Kenneth Krisky? Where are you going to be? I'm going to be in Moscow. Okay. So you'll both be in Moscow. So how, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, since, since you're just embracing the whole Kenneth and stop being, and you're not going to be Kenny anymore, I'll let you pick. I've been uh, Kenneth a long time. So if, if you want me to be Ken and you be Kenneth, I'm very, I'm okay with that because I've had Kenneth for 50 years. Uh, you know, that's, if you want Kenneth, you take it, buddy, because it's fine with me. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there in August. Okay. That's fine with me, too. Yeah, you could do a little social distancing. Who's going to get the name? I'm joking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, social distance arm wrestling. Yeah. Arm wrestling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so any other questions? Thank you all so, so much. We cannot wait to see you all on, uh, the ambassadors can't wait to see you all virtually. Uh, next, you'll start getting a lot of invites. So check your email, they're gonna be with the ambassadors. Um, I told them I told them that uh, you all probably wanna see maybe a little different faces, student faces. <laughs> so you will get some invites starting next week um, for ambassador coffee chats as we call them so and if anybody wants to talk to an ambassador individually we're also happy to accommodate those requests as well yeah we'll send you the new name because there's new if you go to the website it's not updated so obviously the ones that graduated are not available at this time they're studying for the bar so we I have asked them today to update their bios okay good so once they're updated we'll send you the link <laughs> and you'll see all the new ambassadors and the current and the just basically all the ambassadors so i put that down ambassador so, okay. Great. Hey, thanks so much, everybody, for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. Be safe. We'll talk to you later. Thank yeah. you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay, you too. Bye.